This was not originally on our list of stops, but once we realized how close we'd be, we changed plans. The Biltmore Estate is located in Asheville, North Carolina, off I-40. If you are a full-time RVer and you have a dog, they have free kennels here. You can also bring your RV and park it here. So if you're just passing through and you want to stop for the day, there is available parking for RVs. If you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that like button so YouTube knows. And don't forget to subscribe for future content. We're at the lagoon or bass pond and the Biltmore waterfall and we're about to do some hiking on these beautiful hiking trails around the grounds we're going to hike up to the gardens it's going to be an awesome day and we've got bailey and lily right here with us bailey's trying to catch bugs <laughs> We decided to come up on what's called the meadow trail. It's quite steep, but not too bad. We've come to the top of this first little section here, but just look at the view we have up here. Isn't it beautiful? From the goats, we came down uh, one of these maintenance roads here and ended up over here by this bamboo, which was down there. And now we're in this little forest area. We're not quite sure how, where that meadow trail should have gone. We'd think maybe we should not have gone up to the goats, but um, there's no signage. So, and the gentleman at the gate did say you can find lots of trails where there aren't any people up here. The other reason we're taking them back to the RV is because the gentleman at the entrance who said, you know, where do you want to go? We said, we want to go to see where the kennels are. And he said, yeah, we don't really want people parking in sea right now because the bears are moving. We came two and a half thousand miles and Kat still gets to experience the love of bears. And when you call, we'll answer you and always get you through. Grounds of the Biltmore are magnificent but huge. We strongly suggest two days for your visit if you wish to visit the house and grounds. We wore ourselves out trying to do it all in one day. We walked the miles, made the space, stayed the time, never late. We do it right. Makes a little room in here. Isn't it and beautiful side, right shade? Yeah, you could sit down here Let's and put feet in the water when it's a million degrees. In the We're at the boathouse. I don't know whether you can see here. I think you probably can, but there are a lot of fish in here. These guys get well fed and I don't think they get fished. We do it right. We're gonna come back to have a look around the more structured walled gardens without the dogs, because that way, you know, when there's lots of people and lots of dogs, they just get a little bit like, you know. <laughs> well, only one of us can take pictures, you know. I, I have to take lots of pictures. We're gonna look at some of the gardens outside first. They have the tulips on parade right here. Then we're gonna go inside. You couldn't ask for a more perfect day. There's not a cloud in the sky. It's about 80 degrees. Once the largest private residence in the United States. Always on your side.
the grounds of the main estate and were headed down to the conservatory through the walled garden. When you're out here in these walled gardens and you're walking on these old bricks, you can really feel the history. <laughs> I can't, but he can. This place is amazing. So many different varieties of plants and the smells, the beautiful flowers like this one right here. We finished our tour of the walled gardens and atrium and had to hoof it back up to the house for our 4 p.m. entry time. Construction of the Biltmore began in 1889 after George Vanderbilt, grandson of the railroad magnate Cornelius Vanderbilt, chose this location to build his 250-room French Renaissance chateau. Over a six-year period, an entire community of craftsmen came together to create America's premier home, an environmental wonder that surrounds it. The house officially opened on Christmas Eve, 1895. The finished home contains over four acres of floor space, including 35 bedrooms, 43 bathrooms, and 65 fireplaces. George Vanderbilt passed in 1914, leaving the Biltmore to his wife, Edith, who sold 87,000 acres of the estate to the National Forest Service for less than $5 an acre. During World War II, the Biltmore stored priceless works of art from the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. The library is magnificent, straight out of Beauty and the Beast, and the ceiling almost steals the show. The estate is still family owned. George Vanderbilt's great grandson, Bill Cecil Jr., is the current CEO of the Biltmore Company. It's always fun for us to spot vintage orange boxes from our home area. We've seen them as far away as North Wales in the United Kingdom. The kitchens and laundry had all modern conveniences with an icebox and even powered washing machines. We have had an amazing day here at the Biltmore. What a great place to visit. There's three floors of amazing things to check out here. If you're ever in the area, you gotta stop here. We hope you've enjoyed our tour of the Biltmore estate. Join us next week as we finally make it to friends and family, enjoy some mouth-watering barbecue and visit Duke University. Until then, we'll see you on the trail. <laughs>